Western blotting. When your gel has finished running, you should see that the dye front has moved to the bottom of your gel. Remove the gel from the electrophoresis tank and set up your transfer sandwich. Cut a piece of nitrocellulose membrane or polyvanilidine fluoride PVDF, membrane to gel size. If you use PVDF, be sure to charge it in 100% methanol. Assemble your sandwich in the following order, pre-wetting each component in transfer buffer before its addition with the black half of the sandwich on the bottom. Sponge, filter paper, Gel carefully laid out flat. Membrane gently smoothed out to remove bubbles. Filter paper, and sponge. Clamp the sandwich shut and slide it into the transfer tank so that the black side of the sandwich is adjacent to the black face in the tank. Add a stir bar to the bottom of the tank and a cold ice pack to the back compartment. Add transfer buffer, pre-chilled at 4 degrees Celsius, to the fill line. Place the tank on a stir plate and set the stir feature to a low setting to circulate the buffer and keep it evenly cool throughout the transfer. Secure the top of the tank and turn on the power supply. The transfer should take about 1-2 to two hours. Disassemble the sandwich, gently lifting the membrane away from the gel. The latter should now be visible on the membrane. Place the membrane into a small tray and add blocking solution. This is typically nonfat milk or BSA made up in a detergent containing buffer such as Tris buffered saline with tween 20 TBST. Let this shake for about one hour at room temperature or overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. Wash the membrane twice with TBST, then incubate it on the shaker with your primary antibody of interest made up in TBST for 1-2 to two hours at room temperature or overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. Wash the membrane three times with TBST, then add the secondary antibody made up in TBST and place it on the shaker for an additional one to two hours.
If you're using a fluorescent secondary antibody, as is being demonstrated in this video, be sure to protect your membrane from light by, for example, covering it with aluminum foil for this and all subsequent steps. Perform several wash steps, then it can be imaged. If you're using an enzyme-linked secondary antibody, light protection is unnecessary at this step. You'll need to add a substrate for the conjugated enzyme afterward for visualization. If you're using a radioactive secondary antibody, take precautions to avoid unnecessary human exposure to the isotope. Imaging is then performed on autoradiography film. to check that they are the appropriate molecular weight. Resulting bands can be quantified with software.